Yo, what's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, and in today's video I'm going to explain to you why crafting the highest tiers of armor, aka the epic and exotic armor in the Cycle Frontier, is probably not the best idea. Now, the first thing that is probably going through your head is, what the fuck is this dude on about? What is he talking about? Why would I not want to have the best armor? Is he trying to scam me? Or is is does he just not know what he's talking about and that's fair i understand i get it but please listen to what i have to tell you and by the end of the video you might actually agree with me so you know let's just dive right in right now the in-game economy when it comes to the cost of crafting certain items is kind of broken and let me explain to you why if you want to craft a full set of exotic gear, that is going to set you back 154,000 K marks, and on top of that, you will also need two interactive screens, one gyroscope, and a crusher hide for the helmet, and then six print resin, one pure focus crystal, and three crusher hides to make the body armor. If you can't find enough of those print resins and you want to craft those as well, that will take you six smart mesh, 18 pale ivy blossom, and about 20 K marks. And then to dig in a little deeper, if you take into account crafting the six print resins, the entire craft to make a helmet and a body armor will take you five hours and 18 minutes to complete. If you add the crafting time for a purple backpack to that, you will be crafting six hours and 33 minutes before you have one complete gear set available. And we all know that losing a gear set can take anywhere between zero to 33 seconds. And then of course before doing all of that, before you can even just craft it, you'll have to farm multiple crushers and find a gyroscope. Quite a daunting task if you ask me. Now of course you won't want to run such a big set of armor with some crappy low tier gun, so you're probably going to want to pair that up with one of the best guns in the game. You're rocking the best armor, so the best gun, it's only logical right? One of these best guns in the game is the ICA Voltaic Brute, clocking in at a whopping 149,000 K marks. If an SMG is not your style, you can also go for the Korolev Core 47, which would cost you 210,000 K marks. Or perhaps you want to keep it a little bit budget, even in the higher tier of guns, so you go for the best gun from the Osiris faction, which would be the Gorgon at 76 K. Now let's just say with all of your beautiful shiny endgame gear, you are going to go for one of the endgame activities, like for example clearing out the first dungeon in the game, the Crusher Cave. Boom, that's another 49,000 K marks on top of that, because that is what you need to craft the item that will give you access to this cave. Okay, a little side note here, I think it's great that you're supposed to grind for things in this game. I think it's a great idea that the end game is not something you just walk into, you need to work for it a little bit, you need to get the right items, you need to build up some K marks. I think that is great, and I think that is also good for end game armor. That is not what this video is about, so let me explain a little further. Now for that complete loadout that we just talked about, going in to do the Crusher Cave, you will have spent between 311,000 and 445,000 K marks without counting any of the ammo or meds that you'll be using to do it. Last night I was listening into a conversation that one of the partnered creators was having with a dev in their stream over on Twitch. Big shout out to KinkyFTW on Twitch, link in the description down below, definitely go check this person out. He was part of the team that completed the world first Crusher Cave killing the very first Alpha Crusher, which was actually also confirmed by the devs. Now, Kinky was saying on his stream that the rewards they got from doing the entire dungeon, which they did multiple times by that point, barely covered the costs and it just wasn't profitable to do. Of course, they were doing it in that loadout that we just talked about, like the big endgame armor, the exotic armor, the good guns, all of the good stuff, taking blue meds in with them, etc, etc. He did not take into account the costs of gathering all of the materials, nor the cost of repairing the armor after it was all done, because repair costs on epic and exotic armor are quite insane if you're gonna have to do it regularly. Now, if doing the most rewarding endgame content that is available in the game right now is not profitable wearing the armor that was actually intended to be used to do this content, what about the regular gameplay loot then? What if you just want to drop in, you just want to PvP, you just want to find some people, you just want to find some loot, you want to have a couple of good fights? How can it ever be a smart idea to do that? Because we all know that that is not going to be 
as profitable as doing the Crusher Cave. Purely money-wise, just regular looting and PvPing is probably not going to provide you with enough money to keep to, to just maintain the set of armor that you're wearing. And can you even imagine that you do the full Crusher Cave, you spend all this money, you did all that time grinding, and then somebody knows you're doing it and they set up a trap at the exit and they just nuke your squad and take all your shit? Can you just imagine that? I mean, that is a core gameplay part of it. That is part of why we like this game. That is part of what we enjoy about this game, the high risk, high reward situations. But if you're barely scraping a profit and it happens, I can tell you that a lot of people will never ever do that again. Which is not good because we want people to keep playing this game. We want to keep people in the game. We want to keep them enjoying the game. So I think there's a little bit of work to be done here. Okay, but then what do we do? What armor do we wear? Do we all just run around in tidy whities from the basic vendor and get no shinies at all? Of course not. We want shinies. That's why we play these games. We want loot. We want shiny loot. We want big guns. Now, let's make a comparison between the rare body armor and the exotic body armor to put things into perspective. We see that the rare body armor is going to give us 19 armor with 700 durability, while the exotic gives us 28 armor with 1k durability. Of course, providing 9 extra armor is not nothing, and while it will increase the amount of hits that you'll need to take before you die, it is not 7 times better, while it does almost cost you 7 times as much in K marks. Another relevant statistic here is the fact that the blue armor only takes 45 minutes to craft versus a 2.5 hour that the exotic takes, meaning you can craft 3 blue armors and be working on the fourth one in the same time that you make one exotic one. Besides that, the repair costs for rare armor are far more manageable than repair costs for the exotic armor. And the main point is, this does not feel good. This does not make the quote unquote best armor in the game feel like the best armor in the game and that's where it goes wrong. It does not perform up to the standards that you would expect for the amount of work and stuff you put into it. So what should we be doing? If you ask me right now, the sweet spot for armor is going to be rare armor as it has many, many benefits. It's very easy to craft. It's not very expensive. A full blue set will cost you 22,600 K marks and blue armor has the added benefit that you can craft the tactical armor for it, giving you some extra stamina, making it easier for you to move around. Crafting a rare tactical shield, you will need two CPUs, one pale ivy blossom and five rattler skins and crafting a rare helmet will need two aluminum scraps, an interactive screen and two rattler skins. Now, if you want a guide about what I soon consider to be the meta gaming kit for the average gamer in the cycle frontier, please subscribe to the channel because that is my next video that is going to be coming out later during the week. Now, I know I explained the entire thing using the comparison between rare armor and exotic armor, but pretty much the same goes for the epic armor that is in between, it is just on a smaller scale. The main thing holding me back from crafting epic armor is the fact that the body armor requires 3 smart mesh, which is still a very very rare resource that is on top of that used in a lot of other recipes as well. Now, until Jaeger changes some of these values, I know that I will be running around in blue armors, um, just happily collecting profit, not a care in the world about whether I'll be able to afford repairing my gear because I won't be running around in Lamborghini type gear with Lamborghini type maintenance costs. So I'll just be happily blasting away in blue armor. I might be a streamer and a content creator, but sadly right now I can't make the cycle into my full time job just yet. Who knows? If you like this video, guys, please drop a like, consider subbing to the channel, help us grow, help us reach that 1K subscriber mark that we need to be able to apply to the YouTube Partner Program, and uh, I will keep the content flowing. See you guys in the next one. Bye bye